I can give you the address of the dash pad. Rest team will secure the compound. So they had everything here from A through Z. The black tar heroin, China white, mystery drugs, including some meth. The bullets, a lot of bullets. Rifles. The packaging, like the food saver to put everything in. A money counter. It's a total one-stop shop. We're about to join the LA Impact team. This is the first step of their process where they're gathering the money to go meet the informant. They are Southern California's drug task force, and I'm about to meet their director, Dave King, to find out more about their operations. Tell us about LA Impact and what your team does. It's the largest task force uh, comprised of 48 federal, state, and local agencies in the United States. And our primary mission is to target major drug trafficking in Los Angeles County along the southwest border. And this is a major drug transshipment point. A lot of the drugs come up from the southwest border. They come into the Los Angeles area, the Inland Empire. They're stored here, destined for Canada, other parts of the United States, and other parts of the world. Could you say that most of the drugs that make their way here come from cartels? Absolutely, and primarily the Sinaloa cartel. Everything that we're doing is, is mid to upper level major drug trafficking organization. The average seizure in LA impact is $180,000. Just for context, the main cartel that they're after, El Chapo Sinaloa cartel, makes an estimated $3 billion a year at the very least. Cartels control the vast majority of the hard drugs that make it into the U.S., specifically the very addictive meth, coke, and heroin. We do not target any drug users. Obviously, the usage is going up, but we don't target any people for being under the influence. We try to not only cut off the tail of the snake, but to cut off the head of the snake. Our whole goal is to move up higher in the organization to get the people that are directly responsible for calling the shots from Mexico mm -hmm. or from wherever it is here in the United States. That is our ultimate goal, is to follow the leads, and we do a great job of that. Is that your save with the money? That's my save with the money. So today I went to the bank and picked up money to pay informants. Each yellow stack is 10000 LA Impact relies heavily on the work of undercover agents and informants. The guy we're about to meet used to be a trafficker himself until he got arrested with $280,000 from a drug deal and turned into an informant to avoid prosecution. Today, he's still an informant, but just does it to get paid. Wow. Okay, sure. Please, again. Under. Under. Sí, señora, me. Este, dice que yo le dije que hasta las cinco no me dijo que lo aguantara, que antes de las 5 te van a marcar. Ok. De hecho, comenta la estrada porque me está marcando estrada. ¿Me escucharon? Sí. De esta manera yo le dije que hasta las 5 nos podemos esperar. Si no, para otro día. ¿Sale? Se lo damos 45, 600. So we got to pay the other guy forty-five thousand dollars. Damn. So the, between the two of them, around eighty-seven total, eighty-seven yep. grand. Eighty-seven thousand dollars. De donde eres? Mexico. Mexico. How did you get started in this business? We got two hundred thousand, two hundred eighty thousand dollars. He got hit 80, with two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. Worked off that case, so he wasn't prosecuted for that case. So if, once he works off that case, then he becomes a. Uh, what do we call him? Mercenary informant. Mercenary informant. Now you're on the other side of that case. Yeah. The other side. How do you meet the guy? Through the guys. 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 Through the gu
Um, for example, if you live in Mexico in probably you do a, a deal and it goes wrong mm -hmm. and it's not your fault, right? But you have to pay for that. Yeah. Even if you, if you don't have money, you need to pay with your life or your family's life. Mm -hmm. And this is not fair. So it's better when you keep the money because it's the end of the line and they really get you. About a week later, I got a call that an undercover agent had set up a major bust at a stash house. Right in the middle of a nice neighborhood near LA, with horses in backyards. I can give you the address of the stash pad. Rest team will secure the compound. The UC will follow shortly after, once it's been cooperated. This is where we're going. Compound. It's like a big house in the middle of nowhere. And you guys think this is a stash pad because it's an actual house? Yeah, it could be. It's like a ranch, a large piece of property. Our primary suspect told our undercover to come to this address. Person going into the house will be the informant. Correct. Not the undercover agent. Correct. He's not setting foot in there. No, he's not going to go inside that. So it's too unsafe. There's no way for us to control it. We gathered to debrief with the rest of the team about one minute away from the house that they were about to bust. So what they're going to do is when the undercover picks up the informant, um, the team is going to, at the same time, go up and secure the location, up and knock on the door and see who's in there. We're going to pull up front and wait up there. Let's go. Up, ready to go. Copy, we're in uh, scan him. I'll start you something now. Okay. Hey, Jeremy, per the CI dope's in the garage. The agents just went in. This is the house that's supposed to be the stash pad. They're all surrounding it now. Everyone was told if there's any runners to just let them go because the only way they could run is up that hill or down this way toward us. Looks like they got someone. I'm gonna go take a look and see what they got. They were the guys that the informant was talking to? Correct, those are the ones that uh, negotiated with the informant. The house has been secured and the search warrant has been served, which means now we can get up close with the drugs and find out what else was inside the stash pad. So they got quite a bit of drugs in the garage. That's tar. See like that? See how that is smoother? It's like air seal. Yeah, that could be the China wire right there because if you look at the difference, see like these right here? Oh, those are shards. Crystals. Yeah, that's the. There's see the how they're uh, icicles. They're, uh -huh. they're rocky. That's the meth. But you got to be careful nowadays. If this stuff has fentanyl in it, uh -huh. you know, I don't want to touch it without my, without gloves on, because it'll it'll absorb through your skin. Right. And fentanyl is basically synthetic heroin. Yeah. And this is. I'm not sure what that is. They mm -hmm. had a box of that stuff inside there, so they might even come here and package it, uh, separate it, repackage it, and then resell it. Which means this house isn't just a stash pad, it's a cartel assembly line. So they had everything here from A through Z. The black tar heroin, China white, mystery drugs, including some meth. The bullets, a lot of bullets, rifles. The packaging, like the food saver to put everything in. A money counter. It's a total one-step shop. The only thing they don't have is loads of cash. Now that the bust is over, the undercover is giving me a quick rundown. Can you walk me through like a basic version of how this one happened? Yeah, without giving too many details, we had information directly from Mexico and we got a couple of guys to vouch for us here. As customers, they introduced us to the U.S. distributors. How do you feel? It's more of a mental break and mental exhaustion. It's just the way it is. I don't. I don't really get nervous, but I get the butterflies in my stomach, and, and I know that the butterflies stop flying around. It's the day that I quit and do something else. 
Why is that? Because then I lose my edge. So we just got an inside look at what happens to the drugs when they make it to the U.S. from Mexico. $370,000 wholesale. And this whole bus goes to show that drug deals can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter what kind of neighborhood you live in. It can even happen in beautiful areas like this. That one-stop shop we saw today is basically where the wholesaler would buy his drugs in bulk. Next up, we'll be tracking that, what it would look like if the drugs had made it to the next step in the distribution process.